homeless. What up, what up? Over the spring break, my wife and my family, we got to go and uh, drive across the U.S. again. And uh, we went to the East Coast to go uh, see some family and do some uh, cool touristy stuff. And um, we got to go to Virginia Beach and uh, go to Edgar Casey's uh, facility. Opal actually really got to do some cool stuff there and joined the uh, women's group that has been meeting every day. Opal got to be a part of the group that uh, has been praying or sending out energy from ARE and uh, sending that energy to the world and she got to connect with some pretty cool people. We'll actually probably be sharing that a little bit more here in the near future and because we actually filmed our trip so we will be releasing that at some point so stay tuned for that. If you guys haven't seen any of our traveling stuff, be sure to click in the uh, link in the description and go ahead and get caught up. So, on the way back, uh, it happened to be flooding uh, uh, going further down south, closer to the Mississippi River and stuff like that. So we ended up going north. The funny thing enough is that these floods were actually predicted by Edgar Casey. And furthermore, what's even funnier is that we arrived at Virginia Beach on Edgar Casey's birthday unintentionally. It's always funny how the universe has little, you know, alignments and synchronicities like that. But um, on our way back, when we went up north and we got to go through a bunch of states we never gone through, which was really cool. Um, we stopped by one of my students' house and we decided that we were gonna do an in-person attunement, which is really exciting because I really don't work much in person anymore. Pretty much everything we are doing now is about 98% remote uh, because even in person I'm working remotely, so that's just what's become more comfortable. And to me, uh, filming this attunement was really cool because I feel like we were really able to denote or uh, we're really able to see an increase in this patient's electrical excitability and their stimuli and stuff like that after the attunement was done. It just was the energy that was able to go through the body was amplified. Um, so what we ended up doing was a master attunement and so when in my practice and uh, what we kind of focus on for master attunements is opening the crown chakra. When I went to school for medical reiki, our teacher told us or taught us that an attunement is simply a manual opening of an energy center. Um, <clears throat> of course as well as kind of connecting you to this universal energy or this specific flavor of energy or whatever. Um, so that's what we did. We kind of really focused on the crown chakra. Interestingly enough, when we begin the procedure, as soon as I bow in and, and, and start the process, her system is already beginning to exhibit uh, some stimuli. Um, you can see here in the beginning that we're just prepping the body. And, uh, you know, we're just getting the body ready uh, for the attunement. So we were also able to identify some uh, resistance coming from the uh, left leg as well as in the solar plexus. So here, like I said, we were able to identify a miscommunication or resistance coming from the left leg. And we're just working with clearing those energy channels and making sure that uh, that energy is coming out the feet as smoothly as possible. We're doing some auric combing and getting some really clean responses. So we're just trying to really smooth out that uh, auric field. Here we're also using a laser technique, concentrated mainly at the feet. Here we're identifying some uh, resistance in the solar plexus. We're able to identify a minor blockage in the solar plexus. We're just working really pulling it out, extracting it and opening it up and then just filling that energy center. Time 
before we get uh, ready to start the attunement. Walking around the receiver in a circle uh, essentially magnetically charges you to the field, allowing you to amplify the energy even more, as well as protect the individual. What we're doing here is just drawing the symbol three times and pay close attention to how strong the stimuli comes. It starts going all the way down the body, extremely um, uh, much more stronger than it was uh, previously to that. So notice how we get a full body responses from the hands and the feet uh, when we start to really attune the crown chakra. Just scanning that uh, left side again, seeing if any changes have been made, and now we're just really grounding out the receiver, anchoring those new energies that have been established. And that is what, in my opinion, in my practice, a successful attunement is supposed to look like. So yeah, you know, I, I do have attunements where there is little to no movement, um, but in a person that's fully connected, or at least mostly connected, mostly activated, um, has a high, has a, has a decently high voltage, uh, it should look like this. It should look like um, strong level four, level five stimuli, where there's twitching, tremoring, and jolt-like uh, responses going through the body. Anything less means that. The body's not connected properly, or the way that the energy is reaching the physical body is just uh, miscommunicating somewhere. But that's what I got for y'all today. I just thought it'd be really cool to kind of share some in-person stuff. I know a lot of a lot of people like it when they can uh, see something more tangible, or where there's more of the hands-on approach to, as opposed to me just sitting in a chair, kind of uh, making direct commands at a computer screen. What's funny about all this really is that I did the attunement standing and when I was finished doing the attunement I sat down and when I sat down and stopped moving the responses that the receiver was exhibiting became even stronger so much so that she even made it a point to differentiate between the two and let me know that sitting is uh, stronger than when it's standing and that to me just kind of speaks about the uh, laws of conservation of energy conservation you know, the more energy you save, the more energy you have to put out. The less you're doing, the more you can do. You know, one of those weird kind of things, right? Um, but yeah, if you're enjoying these kinds of videos, please hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, this summer, I'm excited to announce that we're going to be um, holding a couple of workshops all over the U.S. as well as out of the country. So if you have a facility or know somebody or are affiliated with one um, and you'd like us to teach the leptokinetic healing uh, model, the leptokinetic healing process at uh, your facility, please send us an email or uh, visit our website. But as always, I appreciate you guys viewing this. I appreciate your time. Your presence is appreciated. And until next time, y'all. Wholeness.